Hey everybody, my name is Daniel Fusco, and welcome to Bite Size Bible, where we break open a section of scripture, and we say, what does this teach us, and how can I apply this to my life at street level, where I live every single day? So today we're going to be looking at Colossians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10, and there is a lot in this section of scripture for us to be able to glean from, so I'm excited to get into it with you today. Picking up in verse one, it says this, of Colossians chapter two, for I want you to know what a great conflict I have for you and those in Laodicea and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love and attaining to all the riches of the full assurance of understanding to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. Really what we learn here is like the Apostle Paul, we need to turn our concern into action. We need to turn our concern into action. Now, the Apostle Paul is really saying here that in his ministry as a, as, 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 as a servant of the good news of Jesus, that he's got some conflict. He's got concern in his heart, not only for the church in, uh, in, in Colossae, but also the church in Laodicea, as well as all the churches who he's never seen face to face. And his concern is that he wants them their hearts to be encouraged. He wants them to be built up. He wants them to, their hearts to be knit together in love. He wants them to be a, a unified church. And he really wants them to be able to understand and walk in the full assurance of what it means to be a follower of Jesus with the mysteries revealed. But really what's going on is he's never actually met these churches before. He didn't start these churches. So instead of just being concerned for them, right, and just letting that concern, the worry overtake him, he turns his concern into action. It's actually why we have this letter. We, we realize about the end of the letter of, of, to the Colossians, Paul also wrote a letter to the church in Laodicea, and he actually asked the churches to exchange the letters so that they can l- learn from each other's letter. See, the apostle Paul wasn't content just to have things that he's concerned about, but he moved from concern to action by actually writing this letter. And it's a great lesson for us because I believe that the way God wants to use each one of us begins with what are the things that are breaking God's heart that are breaking my heart? What are you concerned about? That's the first insight into how does God want to use me as part of the body of Christ, as the hands and feet of Jesus? How can I step into an area of concern that it's not just enough just to be worried about it, but I can be part of God's solution for whatever that issue is. And that really should drive us in the way that we live our lives. So there's a question that's going to come up right now. If you're on your own, studying on your own, I don't want you to rush through the questions. Take some time to seek the Lord about it, pray about it, search the scriptures. Maybe take some time to journal about it so you can go a little bit deeper. And if you're in a community group, this is the question that you're going to be discussing for the, for the next time. And I'll be right back with you. So go ahead. What concerns weigh heaviest on your heart right now? How is God inviting you to take action in that realm of his creation? Picking up now in Colossians chapter 2, Verse five, the apostle Paul says this, for though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Now, really what the apostle Paul is trying to bring forth to the church in Colossae and to us is that really, because we're going to move our concern to action, really there's a, there's a standard of how we ought to live. And I like to say it this way, that you and I, we need to follow the verbs. We, we, need, we need to follow the verbs because really there's a lot of active verbs going on in these verses that teach us what a solid life in Christ, what a solid church looks like. Look at what it says. He says, he's re- Paul's rejoicing to see the good order of, uh, you know, their good order as a church. So Paul's got a lot of joy, 
right? So if we're in Christ, then we should have a lot of joy. Not only that, there's a steadfastness to their faith in Christ. So the church in Colossae has got a grit to their faith. And if there's anything we need today, it's people who believe in Jesus to have that steadfast, that persevering faith. Notice, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. And so obviously that that verb is to receive and then to walk in Christ. Every single day of your life, our job is to walk in Christ. You can walk as any different way you want to, but for the follower of Jesus, we walk in Christ. And not only that, when we're walking in Christ, now we become rooted and we become built up in Christ. You think about being rooted. The roots are a way that a plant gets nourishment, right? So if you really want to grow in your faith, and if you really want to really blossom, you have to ask yourself, what am I rooted in right now? Am I receiving nourishment from the scriptures? Am I getting built up because of the scriptures and life in Christ? When that happens, you become established. And as somebody becomes established, and it says abounding in it with thanksgiving, Really, that's God's goal. God's goal is that we would abound. It's like Jesus said, for he who believes in me, as the scriptures have testified, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. And so God wants to move us as we're growing to be rooted, built up, established, and ultimately abounding in the things of God. So because we want our faith to be active, because we believe in Jesus, we want to make sure that we're learning from the verb. So now, that question's coming up again. If you're in a community group, you can discuss it together. If you're on your own, Don't rush through it. Let's let God minister to us individually. And I'll be right back with you. Go ahead. Are you actively pursuing depth with Jesus? Where do you need to take in less garbage so that you can get rooted in Christ? Now, in Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, the Apostle Paul says this, Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. Really what we learn here is that Jesus is fully God, right? We, we, we see here that for in Jesus dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Paul uh, said earlier in Colossians chapter 1, verse 19, for it pleased the Father that in him, speaking of Jesus, all the fullness should dwell. So really what you have here is that for, for us, we realize that Jesus is fully God. And because Jesus is fully God, it says that we are complete in him. So As somebody embraces who the Bible teaches that Jesus is, Jesus is fully God, then we find our completion, our maturity, our fullness in Jesus himself. And really what the Apostle Paul has been the most worried about, of course, is that the people of God are getting cheated. And notice all the different things you can be cheated by. It was happening in the church in Colossae. It's happening today. Being cheated by philosophy, empty deceit, the tradition of people, the basic principles of the world, not according to Christ. And so it was happening in the church in Colossae and it's happening today where people aren't finding their completion in Jesus alone. They're finding their completion in all these different things. They're in relationships, in their careers. Sometimes people try and find it in politics or all these different things. But really what you realize is that all of those are means to cheat us from finding our fullness in Jesus alone. Not that those things are bad. Relationships aren't bad, careers aren't bad, politics, might not be bad, but listen, we live in a political world, and so there's thing, ways that we can engage, but we should never try and find our completion in those things, because our completion only comes from believing in Jesus, who is fully God, and when we acknowledge who he is, then we find our fulfillment in Jesus alone. So there's one more question for us to be able to explore, either in our community groups or on our own. So go ahead, and I'll be right back with you. Reflect on your sources of wisdom and knowledge right now. What or who do you rely on? Is there anything that you've allowed to take precedent over Jesus and his word in your life? How do you need to give ground in your life back to God?
This is a powerful section of scripture, isn't it? Colossians chapter two, verses one to 10. And there's a lot to explore. So even though we've looked at the text, we've done some time exploring the text, I don't want you just to run past it. There's so much more that God wants to speak to us from every passage of the Bible. But it's been a great time today on Bite Size Bible. I'll see you next time. God bless.